Hello everyone. Today's study is going to be the obvious error. Uh, and this is going to be concerning the new codes. We're going to go ahead and do a report now. And um, we're going to talk about what is um, clearly obvious error. We can't get around it. And I think the more that the truth is let out on this situation, the better we will be as a uh, Davidian Seventh-day Adventist. So we prayed, we ask that you do the same, and uh, the Lord will be faithful. John 16, 13. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. <clears throat> it's called Obvious Air. We did this on our Hear Ye the Rod blog. And, of course, you can find that on uh, hearyetherod.wordpress.com. And, of course, we have studies uh, or posts uh, that we do probably, I want to say, once or twice a month. Um and uh, we've been doing this, uh, well, if you look down here, you can see that we started this uh, way back in December 2012. And so we've, we've done this each month. We may have missed one or two months along the way, but uh, since then we've been putting out uh, many, many reports. So you can come here and enjoy this site. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this is the one we did recently, June uh, 17th. And uh, uh, we're going to go into this one right now. Uh, <clears throat> the reason why we brought this one up is because uh, Mountaindale, in case some of you are not aware, is getting ready to have a um, a meeting. Get rid of this real quick. A meeting uh, for, for some of the brethren on some important controversial issues. And that's scheduled to be uh, August 1 through August 14th. And... Uh, We've been invited, and uh, there's going to be quite a few brethren, I understand, that's going to show up and uh, and discuss this matter about uh, controversial issues, of which we know the New Codes is one of the primary ones, and that's certainly going to be delved into uh, during this uh, session. It's not going to be a regular Mountaindale session, but it is going to be a, a meeting, a, a, a get-together of the, of the uh, members of Mountaindale to discuss the issues. Uh, so... Um, Let's go down and, and start to review this post. We can look at it here. And um, <clears throat> all right, so what, we're, we're, what we see here is that as we know throughout the uh, understanding of the Bible and the rod is that there are some issues that are very hard to understand. For instance, if we read this three symbolic code number five, six, page eight, those who believe in present truth yet continue to find fault with Brother Hoddoff's marriage prove to us one of two things. Either they are very shallow thinkers or that they have no faith in what they believe. For the message teaches that we, as part of the 144,000, shall never die. So when we read this, of course, we can be um, uh, led into uh, a snag. We can say, wait a minute. Brother Hodov is saying he's never going to die. He's a part of the 144,000. So what's going on here? Isn't this air? Isn't this false prophesying? No, brethren. Um, what When we look at the inspired intent, like we mentioned here, and take the whole word of God. In other words, we look at the whole word of God and take it in context of the intent of the writer's point of view. Let's look at it here now and let's see a prime example of this very issue. So we find that in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So here we see that Apostle Paul is professing the belief that he's going to be alive and remain to meet the Lord when he comes in the second coming. So if we're going to go in and say that this is wrong up here, and Brother Hodup was heir, then we got to say that Paul was heir. So what do we do? We're in all kinds of trouble. We have to throw out the rod. We have to throw out the New Testament, Paul's writings. We're in a mess, okay? So let's look at the reasoning behind the intent here. And you know what that is? It is right here. God never takes away his prophet's hope. So <clears throat> Paul had this hope that he would be with the Lord and he would not die. He wanted to remain alive and be with the Lord when he comes. 
Same with Brother Hadaf. He wanted to remain alive and be with the Lord when he comes. Now, did that mean that, that, that those hopes were going to be fulfilled? Obviously not. We see that the, the Lord had uh, his plans, and uh, his plans was according that they both rest, rest in the grave. And we know that both of them will be resurrected uh, to see the Lord coming in the clouds. Uh, Brother Hadaf <clears throat> will be obviously raised sooner because he has a work to finish. We know uh, that the rod teaches that uh, for for just one example, the antitypical uh, Zerubbabel started the work. The Zerubbabel will finish it. Okay, it says that in the rod. And we know that Lennox Sam or any other Ben Roden or any other false prophets who claim to be the real Elijah because Brother Hadaf died was not the one that started the work. It was Brother Victor T. Hadaf that started the in time Elijah message. And therefore, we have to believe that he will be the one to finish it. So therefore, in the prophecies of the uh, the end days, uh, in the special resurrection of Daniel 12, uh, Brother Hadaf will be raised up. So we can see that all of this is nothing more than a misunderstanding many times, and we just don't have the full uh, whole word of God to understand uh, hard to understand areas of the message. Now, that is different. We wanted to lay this down first. But that is different than blatant error. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get into what's called blatant error. <clears throat> and you're going to find out for yourself why these new codes are trouble, why they cannot be considered as inspired. Okay, so let's go with the first issue, and that is called the Sixth Trumpet Issue. This is one of the most primary ones that shows the exposure of the um, the new codes and their, and their uh, uh, uninspired writings. And our first reference, you can be found in uh, 12 Symbolic Code, <coughs> Volume 2, page 4. And uh, we'll just read the highlight part here. It says, it therefore speaks for itself that the sixth trumpet is what? Yet in the future. <clears throat> Brethren, we cannot get around this. It says, yet in the future. Does it not? It has yet commenced to sound. So that's the first one. Then we go down to the same code. However, this is uh, paragraph two. In view of the fact that we are not living in the sixth trumpet. Confirmation again that um, they clearly say that we're not living in the time of the sixth trumpet. Okay, now <clears throat> we go down to 12 symbolic code, and this is found in number two, uh, verse uh, eight. The fifth trumpet therefore sounded when Christ came nearly 2,000 ago, 2,000 years ago. We find ourselves living therefore in the period of the sounding of the fifth trumpet, the Christian period, before the sounding of the sixth trumpet. So there again, we got confirmation. Now, in the last quote on this same uh, symbolic code in paragraph one, <clears throat> but now in this period before the sixth angel sounds his trumpet, some men are to sick, seek death and they will not find it and would desire to die and death would flee from them. Okay, so again, confirmation that period before the six angel sounds is what uh, this code was claiming. All right. So let's go down to what the Rod now says in the original codes that Brother Hadaf published, not the ones that Florence Hadaf published. These are the new codes that were published strictly by Florence Hadaf. All right, Brother Hadaf published codes. All right, let's get to the, the main point here. The sounding of this trumpet had to take place before the door of the Most Holy was opened and the throne occupied. When was that door open? We all know. 1844. So what does that say? The sounding of this trumpet. He's talking about the sixth trumpet here. See? Sixth trumpet. Had to take place before. Before the door of the Most Holy was opened. And the throne occupied. <clears throat> wow. All right. Let's go down to the next reference. <clears throat> In coming from the golden altar, the command, loose the four angels, shows that the sixth trumpet sounded sometime before the veil 
to the most holy apartment of the heavenly sanctuary was lifted. <clears throat> oh, wow, brother. So what do we have here? We have track 5, uh, page 78, track 5, page 31. All confirming that the sixth trumpet sounded prior to 1844. Wow. Now that's now is that is that in harmony with this teaching here? <laughs> no, brethren. If ever there was a contradiction, this is it. Okay, this is something we cannot, this is why we call it blatant error. We cannot deny that this is total contradiction and error uh, from, from these new codes. All right, <clears throat> but this contradiction is not the worst of it. Now, when we get down to the trumpet uh, chart, we're going to try to blow this up for you. All right, we see here again the sixth trumpet being blown. And this is the uh, period right here, 19, uh, 1798. So all of this is being blown uh, prior, prior. And uh, obviously we're living after this time here. So <clears throat> once again, this chart is very solid in its teaching. And Brother Hadaf did not, uh, did not make confusion. We're going to find out here in a little bit where that confusion came from. <clears throat> All right, so if you still, after this evidence is presented, you still have your doubts, well, let's go down to another uh, key point. And that um, uh, is found in the following. At the beginning of this code, and that's the one that we quoted above, tw uh, volume 12, number 2, uh, <clears throat> Florence Hoddoff said, The sermon selected for this issue of the symbolic code delivered by Brother Hoddoff was on July 20th, 1946. So let's keep this uh, date in mind that that code that said that we are, um, uh, well, let's just read it here again, that um, uh, we are now in the period before the sixth angel sounds his trumpet. Okay, in this code right here, it says, Sister Hodoff said <clears throat> that it was delivered July 20th, 1946. Okay, so we need to zoom in, and that is that this error, error filled sermon, it's, uh, volume 12, number two, shown above, according to Florence, was on July 20th, 1946. But a little over one year later, November 1, 1947, and this can be found in 2TG number 13, page 11, and this was published in 1948. So he made it in uh, November of 47, but he published it in 48. One of these D uh, TG sermons Brother Hodder published, he said the following. Uh, we have now seen the nature and time where the seven seals and the seven trumpets begin and end. And those who want to know the subjects in all their details can do so by studying the tracks, the final warning, and the breaking of the seven seas, which is to be mailed free upon request. So what do we gather here? Well, in 1947, which was after the so-called date that Florence Hodoff said he made a sermon in 46, the prophet says, if we want the truth of the seven trumpets, we should go to track five. Well, when was track five published? 1942. So he did not say to go to the TG published on June 20th, which was just about a year prior. He said, go back to 42 and get the truth. So uh, obviously something doesn't add, add up here. He, 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 he would never have done such a thing. The prophet is not confused. The confused one was the author, most likely Florence Hoddoff. Many of us agree to that today. And we see now the utter exposure of her tricky work. So there you have it, brethren. If you add up these things, these all these clues and all this evidence, you see why this issue of the new codes not being accepted as inspired part of the message is growing. Okay, we see that firsthand. And we want to thank Brother Michael Graham for... Uh, uh, showing some of these issues to us 
uh, so that we can make this first uh, part one report. And uh, so that concludes the part one report. We hope you've been blessed. And uh, again, if you study the issues and, and get on your knees and pray for pray for guidance from the spirit of truth, that the Lord will be uh, faithful and do that. Show us the truth. Show us the clarity of our issues. And um, we can't get around this issue here, brother. So thank you again. And uh, until next time, may the Lord continue to guide you into all truth. Amen.